Well, it's about Betty White today. So, wonderful woman, 99 years old, what a life. Hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So yeah, so she was a great, and uh, we'll see what um, what the cards can tell us. Um, just at random about Betty White and I'll give you a little information about her too before we look at the cards. So I want to tell you just a little bit about what I found out uh, for Betty White. You know she's been in uh, television for or, and, and radio before that for um, 80 years, 80 something years. So what I'm going to do this week is there'll be two videos uh, that feature uh, Betty White. There should be and uh, this will be the first uh, part of that. So in 1922 Betty Marion White was uh, born in Oak Park, Illinois on January 17th. Uh, so she was a Capricorn. And her legal name was Betty, not a shortened version uh, of Elizabeth. She was the only child of a homemaker and a lighting a company executive. Her paternal grandfather was Danish and her maternal grandfather was Greek. And her other roots being English and Welsh, both of her mothers were Canadians. Uh, 1923, the White's family moved to Alhambra, California when she was a little over just a year old and then later to uh, L.A. during the Great Depression. To make extra money, her father built radio crystals and sold them wherever he could. And since it was the height of the Depression, he would trade the radios for other goods or, or even dogs on some occasions. And um, Betty attended the Beverly Hills uh, Unified School District. In 1930, her earliest glimpse in entertainment was a guest call on a radio program when she was eight years old and appeared uh, on uh, some episode of that program. In 1939, she graduated from Beverly High's High School. So imagine that. And then three months after graduation, she sang on an experimental television show. But her interest was in wildlife, sparked by her family vacations in the Sierra Nevadas. So she wanted to be a forest ranger, but women weren't allowed to do that. So uh, instead, she pursued an interest in writing and wrote and played the lead in a graduation play at the Horace Mann uh, School. Then, Betty found work modeling, and her professional acting job was at the Bliss Hayden Little Theater. That was her first professional acting job. Uh, when World War II broke out, she put her career on hold and volunteered for the American Women's Voluntary Services. And her assignment included transportation of military supplies through California, and she also participated in events for troops uh, before they were deployed overseas, you would uh, presume as a hostess or maybe a performer. Uh, while volunteering with the American uh, Women's Voluntary Services, she met her first husband, uh, Dick Barker, a United States Army Air Force's aircraft pilot. And uh, after the war, the couple married, moved to Ohio, owned a chicken farm. The marriage ended in divorce within the year. And Betty had later said that, you know, back then, um, you just didn't have sex unless you were married. So they really wanted to be married. But like I said, it only lasted a year. Then after the war, making rounds to movie studios, uh, she was always turned down for not being photogenic. So she started looking for radio jobs because, you know, they don't see on radio, reading commercials, playing bit parts, and sometimes even doing crowd noises, making about $5 a show. But she would do anything, like even singing for no pay or making an appearance in some local uh, game show. Um, for the more prominent radio shows that some, some really old folks might remember, she was on Blondie, she was on The Great Gildersleeve, she was on This Is Your FBI, and then her own radio show, The Betty White Show. That was the first ever Be uh, Betty White Show. In 1947, she married her second husband, Lane Allen. He, now, he was a Hollywood talent agent famously, who famously encouraged her to get out of the business. Uh, much later, much, much, much later in life, he was married to a man. But... Um, in 1949, she began appearing as a t that marriage didn't last either. Then 1949, she began appearing as a TV co-host in LA. In 1952, uh, she hosted a show by herself for five and a half hours of live ad lib six days a week over four years, and would sing at least a couple of songs uh, during each broadcast. 
So there you go. Now, throughout the 60s, uh, the 50s and 60s, Betty began a 19-year-old run as the hostess commentator on the annual Rose Parade for 19 years, plus a number of late-night talk shows and various other game, daytime game shows. In 1951, she was nominated for her first Emmy Award as Best Actress on Television. And then in 52, she co-founded the company called Bandy Productions, creating new shows with existing characters from sketches on Hollywood TV. So Life with Elizabeth, then, her show, was born, which was originally live, and of course she played Elizabeth. And it won an L.A. Uh, Emmy Award. Then it was nationally syndicated, and Betty became one of the few women in TV with full creative control in front and behind the camera. Think of it. At this time in the 1950s, this show was co-produced and owned by a 28-year-old woman still living with her parents. So in 54... Um, uh, Betty hosted and produced the second of her own daily talk variety shows, The Betty White Show Again, with creative control to hire a female director. Plus, there was criticism for an African-American performer who was a regular cast member, and a local Southern stations threatened to boycott, but Betty said, I'm sorry, live with it, and she gave him even more airtime, And uh, but by the end of the year, the network had quietly canceled the series. And then 57 to 58... Uh, 57 being when I was born, she started uh, starred on a sitcom, Date with Angels, and the only time she ever wanted to get out of a show was this one. She later said it was a critical and a ratings disaster, but ABC wouldn't let her, let her out, but she did have creative control, remember, so she rebooted her old talk variety show, The Betty White Show, and that aired until her contract was fulfilled, so again... And then in the 1960s, White was still a staple of network network game shows and TV talk shows. In 1962, she made a feature, feature film in Advise and Consent. And then in 1963, she married her third husband, the love of her life, game show passwords host, Alan Ludden. And this is where we're going to cut off her history, and we're going to pull some cards for Betty White right now. So this is the Golden Dawn Tarot. Uh, by Robert Wang and uh, Dr. Israeli Rigardi. This is a U.S. Game Systems card. So these are great. They're, you know, um, from the era of the Golden Dawn. And uh, so the little booklet is uh, interesting. It actually has some interesting history in there about the cards and uh, and some good uh, suggestions for divination. So there's that. It's worth uh, giving it a read, uh, in my opinion. And then the cards themselves are handy to use. I mean, they're biggish, but not too big. And they're Beautiful on the back, and then lots of uh, ideas on the front. The uh, One of the people who came up with this design way back in the day, uh, his wife actually did this, uh, the painting of them. So it's obvious that this is, uh, the, the artwork is amateurish in here, but it's still captivating somehow. I mean, I love using these cards. So I do this so you get a chance to see, you know, more of the cards than just the 10 or so that come out in a typical uh, tarot reading. And... Um, Maybe inspire you to uh, look at different cards and uh, see uh, what you like. These are, are nice cards that uh, Golden Dawn, they inspired the members each to design cards to their liking. And that's uh, where these cards come from. So we'll get this going with these. But for just a minute, let's have a minute of, of meditation for Betty. What an amazing story. I mean, a terrific woman. Has just been part of how many generations uh, grew up with their own uh, interpretation of who is uh, Betty White. Amazing. So, we'll just do, I think, a diet cross for Betty White. We may make it a full Celtic cross, but we'll start out with a diet cross. Betty White. Finally at peace with her beloved husband, Alan. Betty White. Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Betty White. <clears throat> so the signifier card for this read, for a lowly person, Okay, five, six, seven, eight of cups. Yep, it's pretty much what it is. So cups are compassion, emotion, um, and uh, the eight of cups is having to leave something behind of emotional value. So that's a perfect way to start this read.
for Betty. The challenge to that, though, is uh, this Ten of Pentacles and the two, four, six, eight, ten. So Ten of Pentacles is a happy family, really having all the value, all the the, the worth that uh, a person or someone can have. And she certainly was that. She was uh, family values, as a matter of fact, um, in her um, television persona, at least, um, in every way possible. So leaving something behind, challenged by all the value that it brings. The uh, base of this reading then, with this Two of Cups, is uh, finding just that perfect uh, partnership, that real love, that really con that real connection, um, uh, emotional, compassionate connection. Yeah, she was. That was that's a perfect base of a reading for Betty White. The past of this reading then, with this Four of Cups, is um, you know having uh, Four of Cups is being offered something that we don't necessarily want, and uh, that's what we had here. Uh, Betty was offered um, eternity, and uh, but she wasn't quite ready for it. Uh, but we don't have the say in that, do we? The sky of this reading is the one, two, three, four, four, six, seven of coins. And that escapes me, uh, the seven of coins. I'm going to look on my uh, cheat sheet here uh, just to make sure I get it right. And uh, the seven of coins is, oh, yeah, working hard, growth, cultivation. You know, it's it's typically wondering if we've done enough. And I think that's a very fitting card to have for a uh, reading of Betty White, because I'm sure she wondered if there wasn't more she could do. And uh, probably we should wonder if we did enough uh, to show her uh, how what she meant to us. So in the sky of this reading for Betty White is a seven of coins, you know, wondering if enough was done. And the likely outcome of this reading is a chariot. Oh, yeah, it came fast. It came swift. And uh, it seems she didn't suffer. So the seven of, of, of the major arcana of the chariot is a, a thing uh, happening quickly. And it's very uh, telling that this chariot is uh, flying through the sky on a, on a bank of clouds. So that's really beautiful. You know, I think we'll carry it on four more cards to a full Celtic cross for Betty. The self of this uh, reading for uh, Betty White, the self of this, is a Prince of Wands making something happen. Now, the Prince is the uh, very least um, effective of the of the royal suite. But I want you to notice that this prince, if this represents Betty, this is an angel. And with an offer of something that's going to happen with a lot of strength and moving forward. And uh, yeah, just on fire. So this was Betty. She took a little something, which is her, her talent. She would not a little something, but you know what she had to give. She took it. She held it out there for us to enjoy. Betty White was the Prince of Wands. The uh, environment that that's in then, five, six, seven, eight of uh, wands. So wands are actions, uh, plans, uh, motions, and this is typically a lot of things happening. So I really am um, um, not sure exactly what all the little things were, but some of them uh, would certainly have been her age. And uh, so she had a lot of, of stuff that uh, caused this. Uh, this was the time that this was going to happen. The hopes and the fears for this, with this uh, six of Pentacles, is doling out the value where it's needed most. And that's what will happen with the uh, film and television record that she's left behind. This will be doled out to us an episode at a time for the rest of our lives, forever, really. Uh, not unlike uh, Lucy or so many other uh, notable celebrities. And then the final outcome for this reading for Betty White is the moon. Oh, yeah. Secrets being revealed. And uh, we'll find out just how much she can, came to mean to all of us. And uh, and this is a time when we really start to pour over a person's life and, and know everything uh, that uh, that we want to know that maybe they didn't want to know. But, yeah, secrets will be revealed. So beautiful reading for a beautiful soul. God rest in peace. Uh, Betty White. Well, what can I say? She was and will remain through the magic of television a treasure for us all to cherish for a long time. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.